But sleep is Mother Nature's best effort yet at immortality, based on everything that I've seen. It's, it's true, because when you think about, you know, who you want to hang out with, if someone's depressed, you don't really want to hang out with them. It's mm. kind of a bummer. No. And if someone's sleep deprived, they're kind of depressed by, by exactly default. Exactly what you, the, the profile that you see is a high anxious, socially withdrawn, sort of depressogenic natured yeah. sort of patient or individual. And why would you? Now, there are circumstances where you would because they're your family member, or they're your loved one. <laughs> and so you will help them. Yeah. But if it's just another individual, you will shy away from them. Yeah. So that stunned me in terms of that aspect. And then well, I can walk you through, I won't bore you, but we can go down to the level of the individual and look at their brain and mm. their brain networks mm. will start to disintegrate when you are mm. sleep deprived. Mm. You lose what's called your prefrontal executive control, which is a mm. very fancy way of saying you go from a an evolved homo sapien mm. to essentially regressing back to your impulsive, emotional tendencies because you lose that regulatory break from your high level executive frontal right, lobe. Right. You're not making good choices. Yeah. You're starting to become more reward sensitive. You're more risk taking mm. and sensation seeking. Mm. You are emotionally unstable. Mm. You have pendulum like swings because your brain has lost the emotional break to yeah. its accelerated gas pedal. Yeah. So from a, and you're learning in memory, take a nose dive like a dart into the and ground. And performance. Quite. And then your performance in terms of your cognitive speed, your speed of processing, all of those things degrade. And then you can also look at what happens for brain clearance. This has been a stunning, I think, finding. It's one that we've been doing a lot of work on, aging Alzheimer's disease. At night, when we sleep, if we are allowed to get enough of it or we give ourselves the chance to get it, your brain cleanses itself of the metabolic detritus that's been building up during the day. And it's it's hubris. I mean, it's well, it, it's hype. I, sh I should say it's hyperbolic in the sense to say that wakefulness from a brain perspective is low level brain damage biochemically, yeah. but sleep is your sanitary salvation. And two of the pieces of toxic metabolic byproducts that are washed away by sleep at night: beta amyloid and tau protein, two protein culprits underlying Alzheimer's disease. This is why we see that short sleep across the lifespan yeah. is predictive of a high risk mm. of Alzheimer's disease. So your brain is affected. Downstairs in the body, we can speak about every major organ system from your metabolic system, your reproductive system, your cardiovascular system, your thermoregulatory system, your immune system, every one of those, we can experimentally just tweak your sleep yeah. and we can measure marked changes in those systems. But then the article went on to demonstrate that it's not just organ systems, it's individual cells. And even when you go inside of a cell, the, the specific componentry of a cell, even the nucleus itself is affected. There was a great study from the UK. They took people, healthy people, limited them to six hours of sleep a night for one week. Mm. Now, for most people, they're thinking six hours of sleep and that sounds almost luxurious. This was their version of sleep restriction. Oh, that's sleep restriction. <laughs> and, and then what they did was they measured the change in the gene activity profile mm. within that individual mm. compared to that same individual when they'd been getting a full eight hours of sleep opportunity. So everyone acted as their own control. And there were two stunning results. First, what they found was that a sizable 711 genes were distorted in their activity caused by that short sleeping profile. So and, many of those it causes the adverse expression of certain genes that correct. lead to more illness. Well, and that was the second result. About half of those genes were what we call upregulated. They were overexpressed. And those were genes that were associated with the promotion of tumors, genes that were associated with um, inflammation and long-term chronic inflammation, and genes that were associated with cellular stress and as a consequence, cardiovascular disease. Mm. Whereas those genes that were actually down-regulated were genes that were promoting the, su the support of your immune system. Mm. So even at a DNA genetic level, you could see your immune deficiency caused by one week of short sleep. So I can take you from a societal level and how we operate together Incredible. as a human society, all the way down to say that there is no aspect of your physiology that can retreat at the sign of sleep deprivation and get away unscathed. It will even tamper 
with the very DNA nucleic alphabet that spells out your daily health narrative. It's incredible. And everything in between. It's incredible. And so, yeah, it, I think, but think about it from this perspective too. It shouldn't surprise us because sleep is the most ridiculous, dumb thing you could ever have designed. From I know, right? From an evolutionary perspective. <laughs> you know, know. You're, you're not eating, you're not finding a mate, you're not reproducing, you're not caring for And you're vulnerable to being and eaten by an animal. you're vulnerable to being eaten. <laughs> right. Now, on any one of those grounds, but especially as a collective, yeah. sh sleep should have been strongly selected against in the course of evolution. And it's once been said that if Like sleep, dolphins only sleep like one half of their brain at a time, which is that's right. they can keep going. They, they have to keep coming up for air. Now you could have designed a system where they just didn't need sleep so that they would never have to worry about surfacing. Sleep was so incredibly necessary for those aquatic mammals. Yeah. They had to figure out how to sleep with one half of their brain right. because they couldn't get around the, right. the this non-negotiable right. thing called sleep. Yeah, And so I think for me, what that really tells us is that if sleep doesn't serve an absolutely vital set of functions, it was probably the biggest mistake the evolution process ever made. And yeah. now we realize it didn't make a spectacular blunder. Yeah. It is- We need a cleanup. It's, it's cleanup. It's, sleep is mother nature's best effort yet at immortality based on everything that I've seen. If you love that last video, you're gonna love the next one. Check it out here.